When Frida Kahlo was in New York City in 1933, she was terribly homesick from Mexico. To keep herself from going crazy, she said, she hung colorful broadsides all over her hotel room. Broadsides with designs by a Mexican artist that by then had been dead for 20 years. That artist was José Guadalupe Posada. These are, of course, facsimiles. But the New York Public Library has one of the largest collections of original Posada works outside of Mexico. I'm Paloma Celis Carvajal, the library's curator for Latin American, Iberian, and U.S. Latino collections. I've just received some very special Posada-related collection materials in the mail, and I can't wait to open them and add them to the library's new accessions. This one's coming from Spain. Wow, look at that. Duct tape. I have never received anything covered in duct tape. It's a box under this, so... Hmm, how should I do this? Look at that. I think once this one's, this piece is off, I should be able to get it. It's a substantial run, 85 of 110 total books, of a children's series called Biblioteca del Niño Mexicano, or the Mexican Children's Library. Published in Mexico between 1899 and 1901, and illustrated by Posada. The books tell stories from Mexico's history, from pre-Hispanic times to the late 19th century. It's the fall of Tenochtitlan. So what you see here, what I'm guessing is Hernán Cortés and La Malinche, who was the princess that was gifted to him and became his translator. So this is Fray Bartolomé de las Casas, who was one of the first missionaries that came to the Americas to evangelize, a fierce defensor of the rights of the indigenous people. Once they're cataloged, the children's books will be added to the 42nd Street Library's enormous Posada collection in the Wallach Division of Art, Prints and Photographs. The Posada collection came to us in 2014. It was a large collection of prints that was um, available um, for a book dealer in California. They contacted us telling us that they had over 600 uh, images by Posada and I mean, it's very unusual to have somebody come to us and say we have 600 images, are you interested in them? Uh, in one fell swoop I think we became one of the major holdings on the East Coast. But one of the things about Posada that's really interesting is that he almost deliberately works in a sort of a, a lowbrow manner which includes even even the quality of paper that he printed on, which were often quite poor, and they were meant as ephemera. I mean, they were, they were designed to be distributed amongst the masses, to be appreciated by the masses, but never really kept um, long term. Having these works at, at, at all is already extraordinary. Part of the problem with Posada as an artist is that he is so prolific. I mean, he's, he worked for a commercial publisher in Mexico City. You know, they were churning these things out. Because of this great multitude of material, I think scholars have found it difficult to, um, to pass it in a way. Well, now that the collection is digitized, I would imagine that uh, scholars at home could do a lot of this research from the comfort of their desks. Um, of course, it can never quite substitute the experience of seeing things in person, but I still think there's, a lot, there's much work to be done, and I think it could be done really well using our collection. To celebrate the digitization of the Posada collection and to mark this year's Dia de Muertos, or Day of the Dead, I co-curated a digital exhibition and an in-person display about Posada's most famous works, his skeleton caricatures, or calaveras. The display will be up at the main 42nd Street Library building through mid-November. On Dia de Muertos, there's a special kind of poem, Calaveras Literarias, written for friends and loved ones, a kind of light-hearted epitaph. Usually, we write them for the living. I wrote this one for Posada. Calavera a José Guadalupe Posada. Estaba un día Don Lupe, hacendoso con su buril, 
grabando unas calacas en fina escena pastoril. En eso aparece la huesuda que coquetona lo saluda. Mi lupito querido, véngase conmigo. En el panteón le prometo abrigo y posar cuantas veces quiera. Eternamente hará calaveras de primera para dar a su jefe don Antonio siempre que usted me acepte en matrimonio.